Hey VC, Wes here, checking in again. Uh, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of a lot of me in this shirt the next couple of weeks. Probably I'm going to be filming a bunch of videos tonight to sort of have some have some backlog material to work with. So uh, over the next couple of weeks, when I'm doing other things, getting ready for the holidays and whatnot, um, I'll still have some videos to upload for you guys. So. So I'm going to be shooting a bunch of videos. i got some thread responses I want to do. i got uh, a bunch of Survivor Series videos I need to make. Uh, probably do a beer review tonight. At least one. And, uh, well, anyway, let's go ahead and get into this one. This one's a uh, vinyl inbox. Uh, picked up some things. Uh, some stuff today. Uh, some stuff uh, a little over a week ago that I bought at the record store and I had it my at work in my office and it was just sitting there and I finally got the chance to go by there and pick them up from the office but anyway let's go ahead and get into it first things first uh, it's it's actually Sunday when I'm filming this and uh, we went to get a Christmas tree today went to go to a, 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 a tree farm uh, here in the northern part of Florida in a place called Citra and so anyway it's Sunday and we we come back from getting the Christmas tree and, you know, I, I pull into the driveway and I see, you know, that standard 12 by 12 brown square that we all love to see at our doorstep. And I was like, why is, you know, how am I getting a record on Sunday? Um, you know, was, post office doesn't deliver on Sunday. And I don't think UPS or FedEx deliver on Sunday unless it's maybe some sort of special overnight thing or something. But anyway, somehow, there was a package from the post office. Uh, it was a package from Sequoia Flame, David. And this is the new uh, schematics for a blank stare, Acid Rain. His first release on his own uh, private uh, record label. Uh, I'm, for once, I'm lucky enough to live in Florida and one of the first people to get this. So... Uh, this is really cool, sort of psych jazz. Uh, yeah, psych jazz is what I would call it. It's very, it's very psychedelic, uh, very fuzzy, very jazzy. There's some electronic elements on here, uh, a little bit, uh, just a little bit, not much. Uh, it's uh, it, psych jazz is probably the best best way to describe it. A little bit garagey, uh, just really, really cool. I think most people in the VC have seen this. I love how the artwork turned out. Um, awesome, awesome that it's a gatefold too. That's just that's just killer. Um, but yeah, good stuff. Check this out definitely. Uh, I'll try to put a link down below. Uh, if you haven't if you haven't seen his video on how to get this, um, definitely check it out. And I do suggest that. Uh, if you're in the VC and you want to hear some good music, get a copy of this for yourself. It's, it's awesome. So anyway, as well as that arriving today, I uh, the uh, the antique mall that I like to visit is sort of on the way between here and the Christmas tree farm. So uh, my original goal was to go to the antique mall, and they. There's been a Japanese pressing of the White Album there that's been there for, I don't know, for over a year, maybe two years. You know, I've, I've always known that this Japanese pressing of the White Album was there. It had it had all it had the poster and the four pictures in it. Uh, you know, it was it was complete. It was Japanese. Uh, I think it had an OB strip. I can't remember. Uh, but anyway. So after after all the Beatles reissues came out, and I decided I really don't want those. I'm not really happy with the way the whole digital aspect of it was handled, and so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go buy this Japanese white album, Japanese press of the white album. It was thirty six dollars, I think, was the price on it, maybe thirty seven. Um, but you know, originally I was like, I don't know if I want to spend that much on it, but. And then I decided, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go buy it. So I went there to go buy it, and of course it it's been sold after after looking at it five or six times. Uh, you know, when you actually go to buy it, it's not there. So it wasn't there. So 
I picked up a few other things while I was there. Um, so let's just go ahead and, and get into these. Uh, first thing I got here is Kate Bush, The Whole Story. I guess this is sort of a, a greatest hits type thing. Um, the main reason I got this is because it has Running Up That Hill on it, which is probably the only Kate Bush I think I'm familiar with. I would imagine it's probably one of her most popular ones. Um, but yeah, I thought it would be cool to have like a sort of a greatest hits and sort of explore uh, her music some more. I feel that maybe you know I'll collect her stuff as I see it, but it's not something I'm going to seek out. But I do I do enjoy her songs. I I've always loved uh, Running Up That Hill. Whenever it's come on, it's just one of those songs that you want to sing along to. I don't know. It's just got a cool sound to it. I do like that sort of sort of laid back sort of chill sound it has to it. Uh, so that was a that was a pickup. Uh, all these were five dollars except one that was six dollars. So this was five bucks. Uh, very nice, clean copy. Uh, the second one I just just put on to just get a sample of, and I ended up listening to the whole thing. It was that it was that cool. Um, Jean Michel Jarre with Zuluk. This was actually the first Jean Michel Jarre I have I, uh, listened to. Uh, this is from '84, and it, it's it's heavily sample based. Uh, it's it's kind of like that Brian Eno and David Byrne album, uh, My Life in the Bush of Ghosts. Uh, if if you're familiar with that, if you like that, you'll probably like this as well. Uh, samples 25 different languages and just uses those samples and mani manipulates them and uh, makes songs with them. Very very cool. This is actually a uh, a French pressing of this. Uh, there's the label on side A. And then side B, it's cool custom labels. It's on Dreyfus Records. That was a cool find. I'm I'm glad I picked that up. This was something I was I wasn't sure if I would want to get or not. Um, you know, I'm I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like Jean Michel Jarre's stuff just because I love the electronic, st you know, sort of electronic experimental kind of things, but. I wasn't sure, but I'm I'm really I'm really glad I picked this up for five bucks. So um, if you see this and you like that kind of thing, uh, you know, pick it up. All right, the next one we got here, we got Neil Young and Crazy Horse with Reactor. And I haven't even sampled this one yet. I don't know how well known this album is or not, but it's a nice looking copy for five bucks. I figure anything you can get of Neil Young's for five bucks is probably a, a worthy, a worthy purchase. Uh, it's got a inner sleeve with lyrics on it and everything on reprise. And the last thing I picked up today at the uh, antique mall was something. I wasn't sure if I should get it or not. Um, it was this was the one that was six dollars, and I was like, I don't know if I want this or not. You know, it's it's a, a group you normally find at thrift stores all the time, but I never I've never seen this album before. I never knew it existed. Uh, this is the Moody Blues Caught Live Plus Five. Uh, so it's got three sides of live live recordings from '69. Uh, the Royal Albert Hall, and then there's five uh, previously unreleased uh, recordings. And this was released in 77, I think it says. Yeah, 77. So, it's sort of an earlier live show, and then s some extra bonus tracks on unreleased stuff. So I thought that was cool, and it was, that was worth six bucks for a double album. Really, really clean, clean, nice shape copy. Uh, cool, really cool gatefold. That's a, that's a Pretty cool gatefold, I think. I like these inner sleeves. London Records Group. Just like the way they look. And this is on London. Okay, and lastly, the uh, two things I bought at the record store, oh, probably a week and a half ago now, and I carried them with me to work, and I walked back and forth to work, so for some reason for the past week, I just haven't felt like carrying these all the way back home with me from work so they just sort of sat there 
at work and uh, I I went by there with my car tonight and grabbed these on the way home. Um, so these are two albums I picked up at the at the uh, Arrow's Aim Records. Uh, first thing we have is uh, MC Hammer's first uh, first. It's not his first album, but it's his first album released on a major label on Capitol Records. Uh, this is Let's Get It Started. This is right before he did Can't Touch This. This is the album before that. So. This one was pretty well known, but it you know it wasn't he wasn't a worldwide name um, until until after this. Uh, but this is a good album. It's got uh, good stuff on here. Pretty much uh, typical MC Hammer kind of stuff. Turn this mother out. Ring them. Um, they put me in the mix. Feel my power. Pump it up. Good stuff on here. I've had this on cassette and CD for a while. And, Finally, glad to have this on vinyl. And the other thing I picked up there at Arrow's Aim, uh, this was just something I pulled out of the dollar bin. Uh, this is Graham Nash and David Crosby, uh, and it does not have a title. And it's got a little schmutz on the cover. I don't know what that is, but I'm hoping a uh, a uh, Lysol wipe will remove that. But cool, sort of. Uh, Double gatefold digipack, triple gatefold digipack. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's typical digipack like records in here with lyrics on the on the sleeve, and then some some neat photography. And for a buck, I thought I'd give it a try. You know, anything Graham Nash, Stephen Stills, or David Crosby, or any of those guys. Usually pretty good. Definitely worth a listen. Uh, so those are those are my recent finds. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Hope everyone's enjoying the holiday season, and we'll see you again real soon. Cheers.